All right. Well, welcome everybody uh, to our, this is probably, well, this will be our last noon edition of Tuesday Talks at least through, at least until June. Then we'll see what happens. But uh, thank you for joining us here in the middle of the day. Uh, we have a couple of special guests with us today that I'm very excited to introduce to you. Uh, first and foremost, we have Adam Ferris, founder of Unique Abilities, longtime friend of NAMI, and general all-around amazing human. And I'm very excited to get to talk with him today about all the things he's doing to help make our world better. Um, also with us today, we have Elizabeth Lewis. Uh, she is the head honcho and founder of Uplifted. And um, Elizabeth is gonna be joining us in talking with Adam. And then we also have ex some exciting partnerships coming up with Uplifted that we'll talk about later in our hour. But first, as we get started, um, Adam, thank you so much for being here. And I wonder if you might just hey, kind of tell us a bit about your own background um, and and sort of, I know you wear many hats right now <laughs> these days. I but, do, indeed. Um, yeah, so tell us, to, just to, to get us going, tell us some about you, what you'd like us to know. Sure, so I have autism mm -hmm. and Tourette syndrome, mm -hmm. which is a very um, unique, um, uh, you know, specialty there, I guess. Autism, Tourette syndrome, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I was diagnosed with Tourette's mm -hmm. at age six. And for those of you don't, who don't know what Tourette's is, um, it is, um, it is a neurological difference where you have involuntary movements and sounds that you cannot control. Mm -hmm. So basically like what you just heard there, that's one of my ticks, right? Mm -hmm. So I cannot control that. And I, so most of the time I don't, I, I don't feel them coming on. Mm. And I, you know, I feel like the media likes to take on to the copolalia part of it, which is um, the involuntary cursing, mm. which is um, about less than I think 10% or so of individuals with Tourette's. And again, that's the involuntary cursing and it's not the best, mm. but so autism, I was diagnosed with um, with at in 2012, so it was a very, very, very late diagnosis, <laughs> and so prior to 2012, um, I had no friends. I was being kicked out, um, being kicked out of uh, places left and right, <laughs> and um, they couldn't hold down a job. <laughs> um, you know, I couldn't um, couldn't couldn't stay in a business because of my autism. <laughs> But um, now, you know, since I've been to a um, trans transitional living program mm. and, um, and uh, gone and had, and I had a job, a uh, life coach, excuse me, that was very, very helpful. Mm. I think, you know, now, since I've been back to Houston since uh, 2015 or so, mm. I have kept a job for almost six years. Yeah, six years. That's June, great. it will be six years. <laughs> June, six years, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I have friends, you know, the small group small group of friends that you can count on. Mm -hmm. For, if you have a really, 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 really big group of friends, it's not, those are not your friends. You know, if you have, for example, on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. If you have 5,000 friends, right? But 4,899 of those <laughs> you don't talk to, right? Mm -hmm those are really are not your friends. So, right. 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 Exactly. So, it's so those small you know. group connections, those one-on-one -on -one connections that really, really matter a lot. Exactly. So, you know, make those, make those small communications, you know, make those, um, the small friends that the small group of friends that you have. And then, so I have the small group of friends. I've kept a job, haven't been barred or kicked out of a restaurant or business, et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> you know anything similar so so what is your what is your job where have you been for the last six years i've been working at walmart um walmart is my job um, fantastic yeah so um yeah but then you've been a little busy on the side too <laughs> I have, I have, yeah <laughs> tell us some so, about uh what you're doing when you're not working at walmart so i have a business called unique abilities and unique abilities is I'm going to put it in the, um, the Facebook chat real quick. 
Okay, um, great. And I'll put it in the, the Zoom chat. So it's um it's a small business where we sell awareness merchandise such as autism awareness and other awareness merchandise, which is handmade by individuals with a unique ability or a disability. But we don't consider individuals with this, we don't consider them individuals with disabilities. Instead, we consider everyone uniquely abled or has a unique ability of some sort, right? Mm. So for example, um, we get these items um, from individuals with what I call a unique ability, for example, right? Mm. And um, in reality, you know, we shouldn't consider ourselves as disabled because we have been able to accomplish so much. Mm. Absolutely. So, Wow. Exactly. So, you know, um, if, so I have autism, Tourette syndrome, ADHD, OCD, anxiety, all the above and more, right? But um, I shouldn't consider myself as disabled, right? In reality, I believe that I am uniquely able or unique because like I say, that's like I said, I have been able to accomplish so much. So. Absolutely. And I think that um, our mayor recognized that, if I'm not mistaken, uh, exactly. on uh, April 6th, uh, earlier this month. Can you tell us tell us some about that? Yeah, so um, Mayor Sylvester Turner, my um, council member Amy Peck, and um, the city council had recognized um, April as um, World Autism Awareness Month, and... Um, they, uh, they had me speak in front of the council mm -hmm. and then the mayor, um, then, um, excuse me, trying to think of my Wait, thoughts. Bef before you go on, what was that like? What was that, what was speaking to them like? It was very nerve wracking, but at, after I got to um, talking to them, it was like, okay, this is cool. So, mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah. yeah, I like this. You can do that. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can, I got this, you know, you I got, got this. this. That's right. I got this. I got this. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But um, so then yeah, after so, you spoke, um, I have communicated with my council member, mm -hmm. as well as other council members, um, in regards to World Autism Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe I contacted my Amy, council member Amy Peck, the District J council member, mm -hmm. and other council members as well. So. This is this is a big thing because because Mayor Mayor Sylvester Turner mm. stated that he wanted to work with me in the coming years, not just year but coming years. So that's mm. remarkable, uh, and yeah. how great that we have some city officials who are listening um, exactly. and and want to be engaged in that conversation for sure. Yeah. Indeed. So that is, that is really great. you are obviously an ambassador for autism awareness, um, what would you want? So just pretend that nobody here knows anything about autism. Where do you start? How do you, what did you say to the council members? How, how, what do we, I mean, obviously there is so much that we need as a community, um, right. but, um, but where, where would you have us start? Um, ooh, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> autism is, um, is um, autism is a to think for a second give me a second to think no problem autism is a um and if you're a first time person hearing about this i would classify it as a disability but um autism is a disability that is onset or comes on in early ages yes. that happens that um that affects your social skills and sometimes um living skills as well that's that's and you said you were how old were you when you were diagnosed in 2012 so if that's not telling too many secrets um how, uh, how old would I'm, you have no, been no no i'm 33 now so i'm 33 now <laughs> okay so it was so, definitely later very much later. So later in your life, it, it, it can be diagnosed later, but it is usually onset in the in in childhood usually. So, and do you think that was the case for you? But it just 
you, you didn't your family didn't know what it was or there wasn't enough no no um I think I would just I think I was just diagnosed later um is what it was so yeah yeah I Shannon can I ask a follow-up question please please jump in anytime yeah Hey, Adam, um, one of the things that I heard you say uh, that was just really profound to me was about um, just being able to, what you would say to the person who may be unfamiliar with autism. Um, And as part of what we do at Uplifted and in partnership with NAMI is dispelling stigmas surrounding Mm -hmm. mental, mental imbalances and mental health issues. Would you be willing to speak a little bit about what stigmas you have run into as you've navigated um, this diagnosis and then how you've turned those into a strength outside of um, the business that you've created? Sure. Um, So stigmas, right? Yes. So stigmas. um, Stigmas. Ooh, I've come into a lot, a lot of stigmas. Um, Stigmas such as like, hmm. well, for like, example, what were some of the things growing up that you, yeah, yeah. So, like, for example, um, for example, um, I'm trying to think here. Well, you had mentioned one thing about how, like, less than percent, ten percent of those diagnosed with Tourette's really have the issue with like the inadvertent cursing. Um, right. And so, I think there's like this notion, perhaps, that it looks a certain way. Um, yeah. So, for example, um, for example, yeah. So, like for example, when when I um when I was younger, right, mm-hmm. and like prior to two thousand twelve, right, mm-hmm. I would go out to a restaurant or go out to a, a place or et cetera, you know, to have a seat or sure. relax or you know chillax, mm-hmm. and I would be mi- mistaken for the wrong person the wrong sure. person on the inside, right? Mm. So, you know, um, I would start talking to somebody, but my words would not come out right. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So mm-hmm. instead of, you know, me saying the right words, I would mistake my words for, um, you know, the wrong words or not, not necessarily cursing per se, but you know, right. my words, were not the right words. Yeah. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, for sure. And it sounds like the community you have that like is rallying around you um, mm-hmm. is it's that idea of like less is more and you've got like fewer, deeper relationships that you're able to be more open with. Um, yeah. Would you be willing to talk about your community and how they've impacted you and just like encourage yeah. you? Yeah, so my, my family, my whole entire family is just amazing. My mom, my dad, my father, my brother, my sister, everyone is great. I've got a little niece now. She's two years old. She's the cutest thing ever. But my father and my mother and everyone in between and more is so, 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 I'm so grateful for them. Um, just because of the fact that they support me. They, they, they do so much for me. It's just way too much to explain that. They do so, so, so much, for, so, so much for me. They pay for my Uber rides to and from work. Um, they'll help me out with this, that, and the other. You know, it's just the small things that count. So I wanted to share this um, this image with y'all or this uh, drawing that I had received. Um, let me take off my virtual background real quick and I'll do that for y'all. So while, you're says, doing, while you're doing that, I will say a welcome to Adam's brother who is with us uh, watching today. Okay, carry on. Love me. Uh, oh. Except me. You'll see that oh, okay? wow. That is marvelous. Hand drawn by someone with autism, hand painted, etc. So I, that's love me, accept me. And these are available through you, your unique abilities website? I uh, know that was someone else that had drawn that, but okay. I, it's just amazing. So, and that wow. someone made it just for you, just because they clearly, you resonated with them and you were. You were speaking a message that they needed to hear too, um, which is what it's all about. Exactly. That is that is marvelous. Um, I know we've got some people watching uh, on Facebook Live who are who are resonating um, resonating with you as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so so what um, kind of besides you know 
the the most key awareness that we need to continue to have in working to erase the stigma and um, yeah. Yeah. what um, what else are you passionate about? What else do you do you really work for um, as you spread the word um, about autism and as you represent someone living an extremely full life <laughs> with autism with Tourette's? Um, what do you want people to hear yeah. from you? Well, I mean, he, you know, he knows. I feel that um, if you have an individual with a disability or a unique ability, um, that you you need to um, you need to uh, let them out in the public, right? You need to let them get out there, and not just have them cooped up in, inside the house, right? So if Absolutely. you have that individual. Yeah, so like, for example, my father, when when I was younger, um, he took me out to public places, out to restaurants, out to movie theaters with my Tourette's when it was really, really, really bad, when I had really, really loud hooting and shouting noises. And um, he would say, Adam, if you're not comfortable, you, we can go home. But instead, I said, hey, let me explain to the patrons or the individuals here at this place. This is what Tourette syndrome really is. Mm -hmm. And if someone bullied, then they would, but, you know, that's not the case. We're not going to accept that in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Instead, we're going to explain to the patrons or the individuals here, hey, mm -hmm. this is what Tourette syndrome really is. Mm -hmm. So that is what I did. So, you know, we can't let people push us around or knock us down with stones because words really don't really, because, because words do not do, because words do hurt us, right? So, mm -hmm. but I didn't let those words hurt me, so which is extraordinary. Um, you've, I mean, you've owned this and claimed it as part of who you are and why shouldn't you, you know, that's, that's exactly what you should do. And I can tell you, my son has um, mild Tourette's, um, he's in high school and I'm so proud of him. He has never, um, you know, as he has had vocal tics and things, some of like we're, we're hearing from you, um, if his friends have asked him about that, uh, he's been very fortunate really not to have been bullied per se, but he has been asked about it and he just tells them. And they, most of the time they go, okay. Um, and they, you know, they get it. And of course it's not always that way. It's probably be better today than it's ever been, but especially because like you said, it's, it's more glamorous or exciting or scandalous for Hollywood to highlight that 10% that's about the cursing. I think probably, you know, people didn't really know what it was before, it, you know, they, so, so they just identified the cursing as, oh, that's Tourette's, but um, learning from my son's neurologist about, I mean, we all have ticks is the reality. The question is, yeah. um, what composition do we have? Uh, how do they manifest? And, um, and that sort of situation. So um, I know that when we had talked in advance of today, Adam, you did want to spend a little time on the topic of bullying. Um, yeah. How do you, how do you want to, what do you want to share with us about that? So bullying, it's something that's a tough conversation too, but bullying is part of our everyday lives, right? I'm part of a nonprofit organization here in Houston called I'm Bully Free. I'm also going to put that in the chat on Facebook, okay? But um, so like I said, part, I'm, I'm sorry, bullying is part of our everyday lives, but it does need to stop. So if we stop um, bullying, you know, sometimes the bullies are the bulliers and sometimes the bulliers are the bullies, right? So um, if the bullies bully the bulliers, sometimes the bulliers become the bullies. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yep. So if someone, let's say, for example, um, let's say, for example, someone um, had bullied someone who has who has not bullied right mm. anyone in their life mm. got bullied right they could become a bullier mm -hmm. yep. but we, instead we need to stop this right this madness all this all this um all this bullying mm. so what can we do we can be nice to one to one another we can care mm. about one another mm. we can we can um we can we can give and give back we can smile and make someone smile every day. So, well, it just, yeah. it just, uh, I mean, I really think the more we talk about most of life, kindness and compassion are at the root of just about everything. Um, exactly. 
And uh, of course it can't be all sunshine and flowers all the time, but mm -hmm. if you can approach conflict from a, at least from a place of respect, mm -hmm. um, I think that sets a completely different tone. Um, uh, I always talk about with my son, it's so much, so much of life is about how you do things. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, it's amazing how, how that makes a difference. Um, is, do you have any perspective or uh, insight on, uh, of course, cyberbullying is one of the new, I mean, bullying can happen in so many forms. And I think, I mean, yeah. bullying, it, it is, doesn't just happen with kids. It happens with adults. Um, I mean, it, it can take so many different forms. Um, but I think we're talking about stigma or or stereotype. I think a lot of for a lot of people, bullying still conjures up, you know, kids on the playground at school, which is real. Mm -hmm. But it's so much more than that now, unfortunately. Um, and then, of course, the introduction of the Internet has made it a whole has opened up a mm -hmm. whole other region. Um, mm -hmm. How have you seen that? What have you noticed with the addition of, you know, of that digital component? Um, the digital component has been a lot. So um, recently, um, our director of I'm Bully Free had di has done um, did an audit of a school, and it was a um, I'm not going to go into details, but it was a um, an individual with special needs, and um, they got the student had their head shaved. And um, so the, the director went in and uh, got the, um, the, the, what's it called, the, the booklets or the, the, um, the, the trying to find my word, sorry. He, uh, he went and he got the, um, the documents just from, right from their website. Mm -hmm. saying you have the right to do this. You have the right to see the cameras from what happened mm. from the school, mm. right? So, but the school would not allow that, but this is this is what's happening. So, mm. but anyway, so, you know, that that school itself did not not the best job ever. <laughs> so, um, but in, in regards to cyberbullying, um, mm. cyberbullying can happen on Facebook. It can happen anywhere. It can happen, um, right here on zoom um you know it's really sad honestly what where it can happen um but we need to take steps to make sure it doesn't happen we need to um watch what we're doing we need to um make sure you know you're not interacting with someone who could possibly be a vic who could possibly you know be a uh, someone that's possibly doing something and if you see something stand up if you see something stand up you know and talk and, and make sure you tell somebody. Absolutely. What would you say to the individual, either the child or the adult or the teenager who is experiencing that um, and doesn't quite know what to do? Um, they're not doing anything wrong. They're just living their life. How would you provide um, some sort of encouragement to that individual? Um, if they're not doing anything wrong, but they're... Um, state that last part again so like the individual that's being bullied just by virtue of being bullied they may look different they may act different talk different whatever um what would you say to them as a piece of encouragement to persevere through what is really very can be very debilitating yeah i would just say keep smiling um you know that's my thing is keep smiling make one person smile a day think about how that would make them feel make two people smile a day imagine the possibilities right Never say never. Can't is not a word. Um, um, and never give up. So that's incredible. It is. It certainly is. Mm -hmm. The other thing I've loved hearing you say a couple of times as you've talked is that you're finding your words. And there's a part of me thinks that if we all took a little more time to find our words, what we actually want to say, right? <laughs> or maybe to check some of our words before they come out of our mouths um, exactly. and took, took another minute to think about those words. Um, uh, that, uh, I think those are, 
that taking a moment to find your words, those are words to live by, actually. Oh, and there, in fact, is our fearless leader. Dr. Neil Sarahan is our executive director. Uh, yes, yes, indeed. We Hello see you. from the starship, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Adam is on the starship. Um, <laughs> so uh, Neil is joining us today, um, and uh, we have several people joining us on Zoom and some more on Facebook. Uh, so we've been hearing all about not only the accomplishments Adam has has done physically in life, um, but just his incredible, you really have such an extraordinary outlook on life and approach to life. Um, I'm deeply moved by your positivity and your sense of resolve, uh, Adam, as you, I mean, you're, it, it feels like you're almost fearless. And of course, being brave doesn't mean not being afraid. It just means not letting the fear stop you. But um, Neil, I, I know you've known Adam for a very long time. I wonder if you have anything you want to jump in and say or ask Adam um, before we. Uh... Yeah, well, I just want to comment on how much I've uh, how much I've learned from 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 Adam. And if if amongst our amongst our audience here today. Uh, you know, we see an example of um, of of adversity turned to uh, turned to acceptance, accomplishment, and uh, and achievement. Those three A's. That it's, those are really three important things that, that Adam has has uh, has taught me. I've never said those three words together in the same phrase, Adam. So uh, so we're gonna we're gonna and then we add Adam. Then that's a fourth A. So. Uh, <laughs> You're a you're a four A sort of guy, and so, but um, but well, I I, I I was hoping we could be a um, you know I was hoping we could be an avenue for you uh, to uh, to speak to, to to those of us in the in the community here that uh, that face what you and I called uh, neurological differences. You know we didn't we. We didn't always call them mental illnesses, or we didn't always call them by the diagnosis. We we called them by just, hey, these are some differences, and uh, and what? How do we think about, uh, you know, how do we think about uh, what's the road look like? That that'd be one. What's the road look like? I see Tim is asking a question about his six and a half year old uh, who has autism. Uh, yes, indeed. And, he was and, um, so Adam. He was um, Tim's grandson. Was verbal until he grandson. was two. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's his grandson. Was uh, he was verbal until he was two, but has not spoken since. Did you ever have a nonverbal period? And if so, what helped you get past that? Hey, um, I have not ever had. I have not ever had a nonverbal period, but. Um, maybe I could help you find some resources if that's possible. Or maybe Nami could help you find some good resources if possible. That would maybe a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of the things that Adam and I shared was that, uh, you know, the, uh, the onset of autism is, is particularly troubling. Um, some of the things that uh, I know as a developmental psychologist is that um, people, youngsters with autism in that age range in two or two years old uh, make just as many communicative attempts as a, as, as the norm. Uh, mm -hmm. But the unfortunate thing is that almost all of those communicative attempts are failures. And, and so what we all do when we're faced with failure is we go to something else. And when we look at the history of, of uh, communication attempts um, as stopping at the age of two and a, two and a half, then our job is to rebuild a communication system first, usually typically, which is not voice. And, and that's something that people don't realize as much is uh, the uh, is that the, the, this it, whoever it is wants to communicate wants to communicate and it's up to us in the 
to find those alternate means. Um, Adam, you might talk about, uh, you know, your Tourette's, uh, which was, I think, a marvelous journey of um, finding, uh, it, you know, a lot of people think about Tourette's as suppression of, uh, you know, of, of voices or grunts or noises or particularly rude things to say and, you know, this picture that people have about Tourette's. But I, th I thought we made some really neat progress in the world on making a place for your, uh, for, for your Tourette's. Uh, sometimes they were bird squeaks, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yep. really sometime. really loud noises <laughs> yeah 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 that. and that we we as a community can, can you talk about that adam because yeah. we really when, yeah go ahead, go ahead. i was gonna say um i remember back at monarch um especially this was when i was in puberty and Tourette syndrome gets to getting a lot lot worse when you're um when you're in puberty mm. so um back at monarch when neil was there and i was there my really really loud hooting and shouting noises that i was speaking of mm. were really loud but at the same time i had to learn right mm. so um you know i had to go to school mm. i couldn't back down from school obviously right so mm. neil and the monarch school and everyone were very 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 caring mm. the students were very caring and everyone the teachers etc were very caring to understand that, hey, Adam has Tourette's, Adam has to yell every so often. And, um, you know, then um, they said, um, well, we're going to just deal with it. So if yeah. I needed to go into a quiet space for a little bit and relax or take five, as I call it, take five minutes to relax and take a break, then I could. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think I think that the, there was a two way thing going on here. With One was the community had to uh, <laughs> learn all right and then as adam took more and more command over instead of holding back instead of holding back for uh as long as he could and then being really loud then then adam would say ah you know i, I i'm gonna i'm gonna go out back for a while and uh and and uh, and i'll see you and and when he would go out back they wouldn't be as loud so there was this there was this thing going on, which uh, was about ownership, but it was also about community acceptance. Yep. And that's the example that Adam gives to the world uh, that I'm, I'm just so proud to know him. And, and this, this back and forth, uh, you know, that we, we aren't the sum of our, uh, of our differences. Um, you know, we aren't, uh, we, we're, we're all kind of primed to notice differences, but what's but what's behind them? I like your work on bullying, Adam. Have you talked about that? Yes, sir. We got to that. Thank you. Hey, yeah. Neil, do you remember when Greg Long was at Monarch? Greg, Mr. Greg Long. Yeah. And um, so he said that I could get on a saw, like a in, in word working class, actually in word working, and so I was having really, really shaky hands at the time, remember, due to my... Tourette's. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. So, but listen to this. So at the time, so I was having really, really shaky hands from being on a lot of um, antipsychotic anti medications. Mm -hmm. But once I got on that saw that made very, very, very precise lines, right? Mm -hmm. My hands stopped shaking mm -hmm. altogether, mm -hmm. which is amazing. That's because right. Because I was focused on something. And because, you know, being focused mm. means, you know, you're focused and it's not going to um, happen as much. So, And I think when you're focused, it also takes you outside of yourself. When you're focused on something outside of yourself, that becomes strangely liberating. I think that functions mm. on a lot of levels. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, certainly I know that personally and professionally, one of the things when you're in bouts of depression, if you can summon 
the strength and you can't always, but if you can do something for someone else, it's amazing how empowering that can be. And I think, oh, yep. And uh, Justin, your brother is saying that you do the same thing when you're giving public speeches. Um, exactly. You are because you're focused on something external. And so um, it's just incredible what that does to like brain chemistry to get you where you need to be in a moment when your teacher could have very easily said, no, 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 your hands are too shaky. And of course he would be right to be trying to protect you if it were dangerous, <laughs> exactly. but he said, let's try this. Let's see what the possibility is for this. And then it turned out to be this extraordinary moment that you remember all these years later. Um, yes. I love that. I think, I think it's cool too. Like the empowerment that Dr. Neil gave him, like what, like what a way to use your position within that school to just go to bat for those that you're serving and not have this one size fits all of this is what classroom behavior is going to look like this is how this is going to be and you just allowed adam the space to do and and be and that has just impacted him from my understanding from adam earlier for the last 20 years and so you know the Dr. Neal, as much as I can give you credit there for the way that you led and provided leadership either with NAMI and then prior to that, I mean, this is just a very tangible example of you meeting people where they are and empowering them to move forward. And I don't know, I think that's just, I yeah, that's the fun that, I mean, you know, like, like one, one deal is that's, 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 that's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right, we're 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 not supposed to, you know, take take people and cut them into the shape that we want them to be, sure. and then and then move them through. We we are about if if you know finding a way in which people can um, can can go with their talents, go with their strengths, and expand their ability to take ownership of the things that are a challenge doesn't mean to ignore them it just means hey we're gonna we're, we're gonna uh we're gonna figure this out right well, and you're not gonna write somebody off immediately because of those challenges you know you're gonna say okay well how do we incorporate well i i actually had um, a long talk with greg long <laughs> when he told me he was gonna he was gonna think <laughs> uh the power, the power tools, and the drill press, <laughs> and all that for Adam, and um, that, and uh, the the uh, the things that are that are so fun that we remember is that there weren't these, these just that this has been the one of the things I admire about Adam so much, and and about his family, is that uh, is that th there are many highs and lows. There are many highs and lows. There are many calls for, uh, many calls for depression, uh, many calls for for serious anxiety, and that's true about a lot of us, right? Um, but it's 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 also true that 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 Adam and so I mean, maybe you could talk a little bit, Adam, about you know, yeah, we want to make the world a better place, but how how do you describe these uh, waves? You, you know, because in, in some sense, sometimes we talk about um, the uh, the power of a failure. Yeah, and then reflection upon that, so that you can go forward. And uh, I don't know. We might be. Is is that okay to talk about, Adam? Um, not sure exactly what you mean, but. Well, 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 let's see. Um, here's what I mean in my own life is that um, sometimes the uh, the ways that I the, the ways that I failed to do what I what I wanted to do. You know, you you got into uh, community college right mm -hmm. at, at HCC and there were real strengths there and then there were real challenges mm -hmm. and then it, it, and the challenges were are as I remember it that just working through the doggone reading programs yes Those you remember really that tough. yeah yes, you, I, I remember that one that the um the English course I yeah remember, Neil, 
I was at HCC before yeah. I was at the Vast Academy. Right. Yeah, and I then, know. Yeah. And then Go I ahead. had to take I had to take this darn English 32 something or other. It was the last, last class before I could continue. Yeah. I hated it because the <laughs> teacher, yeah, the teacher did not fail me. That was a good thing. <laughs> she said I could basically sit in the class and continue to watch and learn, et cetera. But she didn't fail me, for example. So, but it yeah. was really, really hard for me to, to read and everything and read these big books. And it was, it was really tough to, um, to understand what they were saying with my ADHD and, you know, everything more and in between. It's just, you know, and if, for example, if you, if you do have ADHD or OCD or any, any type of unique ability or disability, right? You have the right to accommodations at, at college or school, for example, go, go and contact your um, accommodations um, center. So, yeah. With yeah. And the thing that I remember about this and the kind of the point that I like, you really hated that English class, right? I really and, did. <laughs> and, 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 and the, one of the things that was so hard about it was, was that the difficulty in focusing. Yes. Like, like you would actually put your brain to sleep or you would start wobbling when, when it was time to really focus. Reading wasn't the best way for you to focus. And, um, the, uh, and yet you have, you have found other ways to, to move forward or you have, uh, you know, you said she didn't fail you, but uh, the other deal is that you left a door open and you found the next door at HCC, which made, which, which made more sense, right? Yes. And so in that way, that, that's the kind of thing that uh, pretty much all of our audience uh, today, I know Kren has the uh, hope that, uh, that he's going to be a script writer in Hollywood. <laughs> that's really, and, that's and I, I hope he does. And that, and, and sometimes he's closer to that than others, right? Um, and uh, so, so we all have these, the, these, these hopes and the, the, the desire for contribution. And, and I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, so I'm like, like not saying that um, for any of us, it's all easy. Oh, you just do this or, oh, you just do that there's a lot of struggle involved here and staying with the struggle is one of the things that I admire you for Adam thank you for that thank you Neil well and I wonder if that might be a good point um to oh wait before we before we transition um to uplift it and some of the things because I think there's probably some good tie-in with what we're talking about now with uplifted move move uplifted movement. But before we do, uh, Latanya is wondering, Adam, what other ways you found that helped you focus? Obviously, you can't be sawing all the time. Um, so what other things have you found as you have moved through life and held down a job for six years and done all the amazing things that you've done um, when you really need to get, on, get in control of it and focus? What, what works for you? Sure. So um, focusing for me, includes um, taking my medication, which when I turned my camera off and voice off there, I was actually taking my noon medication. So got to take those. And, um, mm. you know, some things like that type, type of things do help. So I do take a very important ADHD medication. Mm. Um, other things include eating a healthy meal, healthy meal, and make sure you, you're eating healthy. And, um, you know, um, the other things include... Um, making sure you're um, exercising and different things like that do help. I will admit though, during COVID-19, I have put on a few pounds just because I have, been, have not been exercising, so. You know what, Adam? I think you're not the only one. I don't think so either, so. <laughs> yes, I, I think you can uh, take that off your worry plate right there. Mm -hmm. I think I can, I think yes. I can. So. Yes, indeed. Thank you for, for sharing that. Um, Elizabeth, welcome. you wanna tell us a bit about what you do and your mission there at Uplifted and then how we are going to be working 
together. Um, it's another fearless leader, Miss Judy Spugs. That is another fearless leader, Judy Scruggs, who knows Adam from the Monarch days. I'm possibly, um, but uh, yes, but indeed, is certainly indeed, indeed. a big part of NAMI uh, today. So Judy, we're glad you're here. Um, so Elizabeth, uh, turning it over to you. Sure. Um, yeah. So thanks for having me. I'm super stoked um, to just have an opportunity to talk with you guys. So I am the CEO and the co-founder of Uplifted Movement, and we're a nonprofit organization that is partnering with NAMI. Um, for something called Stigmas to Strengths, which is the movement for mental wellness. And so at our organization, we believe in combining mental wellness with physical wellness. And so um, I've just been really quite thankful to be provided an opportunity to partner with you guys in an ongoing way. And, you know, the way that Adam really left that last question ties in directly to what it is that we do at Uplifted, which is maybe trying to make those healthier food choices and utilizing exercise as a way to, um, to just feel better and to move. And one of the things that we really hit home is that not all, um, not everybody moves the same way, but movement is for everybody and every body. And so as we partner with NAMI, we've got, um, what's called a super team. And so my business partner, Thomas Westbrook and I, um, are really just hammering out several events for the month of May that you'll be able to see. Um, we'll get that sent out. And then if you're on our social media pages, um, starting this coming weekend, we've got a substance abuse panel discussion. Um, Dr. Neil is going to be at our May mashup on Sunday to just really kick it off with a big block party and a big just celebration to denounce the stigmas around mental illness. Um, and just really collaborate for NAMI walks and be able to do what we can. We've got a hundred thousand dollar fundraising goal, um, to keep right here in Houston, to be able to provide those critical resources, those mental health resources that NAMI is able to provide in a really profound way. And so that's kind of the crux of what we do. Wonderful. Well, thanks. And Neil, is there anything you want to add to, to that and to our partnership with Uplifted? What do you want to say? Oh, you bet. You, you, you bet. I mean, you hear all this stuff about mind, mind body, uh -huh. right? And, and, and everybody knows they're not disconnected. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to offer Adam brain surgery every Thursday. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, uh, there you go. There you go. And there you go. And, and, but, but, but we're one. We are, yeah. we are mind and we are mind and body and we are spirit you know the uh the spirit part is is also really important that's connected mm -hmm. to people having uh, the desire to have a purpose and to, sure. and to live their purpose and so yeah. it, when we get in motion when we get moving when we get connecting to people then we have well, we're sort of doing the exercise at being our mm -hmm. best selves, and by ourselves uh, alone, I'm not. I'm. I'm not. I'm not my best self alone, and I am not my best self sedentary and sitting around. So, uh, so when I when I think about this partnership with Uplifted, I think about the ways that we can use mental wellness as an exercise rather than mental unwellness as a disease to be sure, treated sure. you know we're we're working on our mental wellness and we can do that in a lot a lot of different ways so uh that's that, that, that I'm, I'm very excited um the uplifted team has uh put together what's called a super team mm -hmm. for the NAMI walks, which will be coming up on May 22nd. It's going to be a kind of a, a, a multi-site. It's not a virtual one in that we won't all be on Zoom, but it'll be a multi-site thing that we all travel around town and see uh, what we're all doing. And sure enough, when we look at it, what people will be doing, they, they won't be doing group therapy. They, 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 they will not be doing, uh, you know, they will be doing wellness activities. 
We'll be doing walks. We'll be doing community play. We'll be doing art together. We'll be doing all these things together to say, this is how things get into the right zone for us to be mentally, physically well. So, so uh, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're excited. We're, we're excited about the, about adding the dimension of that. Um, and Adam, you're not alone in saying, uh, you know, your weights come a little bit out of balance um, <laughs> in this, um, in this, in this, um, in, in this COVID time, we are all, we've all been knocked out of balance in some way or other. We've, we've all, and, and, and some, and, and some dreadfully, tragically so. Um, but we can all be part of helping each other in balance, get right. into, into balance. So, uh, so I know we have on the, uh, I know we have on the chat line, um, some opportunities for if people want to, want to join the NAMI walks, uh, whose team is this? Whose event is this? Whose 1050 is this? Is that Elizabeth? I believe so, that's, I, I tried to link to the page that, uh, maybe I put the wrong link, but I thought that huh? was the uplifted super teams page. Yeah. I, I could be wrong. <laughs> okay. But, well, that's, then, well, that's yeah. what we tried to. And, yeah. um, and we have a website for that. So our, yeah. so if you go to stigmas, the number two strengths, um, or if you yeah. go to, actually go to upliftedco.org and then in the top left, it'll, it'll give you a link there. We've got an Instagram page and we just, I think, you know, it's just one more tool in the toolbox. Like let's, it, there is absolutely a place for medicine. There's absolutely a place for therapy. There's absolutely a place for physical wellness. And if we can take it and nutrition as well, like if we can have that holistic approach, I think we've got the best chance of success in, in living a life that is fulfilling of mind, body, and spirit. And I don't think that they, I think that they coexist so well because they were supposed to in the first place. And so destigmatizing what it looks like to wrestle with schizophrenia or my own personal struggles with anxiety and disordered eating and suicidal um, ideation, um, all of those things really, you can't just use one piece of the puzzle to fix it. Let's work collaboratively and expand our community. Use the resources from NAMI, use your local mental health um, professional and your- I'm getting some static on my end or some- Oh, should I? Well, I can't. Yeah. yeah. Just me. Uh, well. I don't have any static, but yeah, I mean, I think that it's, it's a really neat opportunity to be able to rethink and change the face of what mental health looks like, because yeah. it's, it's not one size fits all. It doesn't look like the mom who's battling postpartum depression. And it doesn't always look like the woman who's too, um, you know, grief stricken because of the death of a loved one. Like it is, it's a continuum and it's a spectrum and let's shine the light there. Yeah. So Great. Elizabeth, yeah. Adam, Adam, has, um, let, Adam has put on uh, this uh, a site for his website mm -hmm. for opportunities for uh, unique abilities. That's and right. uh, and then we also have Adam's brother here. Ad Justin, have you spoken in yet? or He shared some comments with us in the chat. <laughs> okay. O okay. Yes, I, Share some uh, comments. Share some well, comments about what you do. Well, yeah, about, I mean, I, mean, I, I also own. wanted to identify that Justin is, uh, is, a, is works at one of one of our most trusted partners in the in the hospital, in the in the mental health hospital enterprise at crisis. And do you do you have? I was wondering if you know if we have a minute or two, if you could just kind of describe what the what the pandemic has is sending send in your way, Justin, are, are you there? You may have. I'm here, I'm in a meeting, so don't, I got, I got just a few minutes. <laughs> hey, all right, okay. Well, we thank you. And we, we just want to acknowledge Cypress Creek Hospital. Um, and, uh, actually, Justin, um, 
has start, ha, he was the founder or found founding person of the the Honor Strong program. Honor Strong. Uh huh. Honor which, um, Strong. Yes, sir. Yeah. Honor H O honor so honoring somebody honor strong yeah 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 it's, put it's that in the way that's yeah, I'll great it, i'll try to link it here one second okay it's and then I, I, I don't want to miss the opportunity with a few minutes that we have left for yeah. uh latanya and cran and barry anything that y'all want to uh, chip in here we will have to wrap up in just a minute, but I, yeah, right. I definitely want to encourage uh, anybody who wants to, um, to to share with us here. Um, and Elizabeth, I wonder, um, can you share with us the Instagram for uh, Stigmas to Strengths um, huh? IG page? Stigmas, the number two, Strengths. Can you put it in the chat? Yep. Uh -huh. And then it. Uplifted right. is just Uplifted underscore movement. There you go. And Stigmas to Strengths is just a program of that organization, similar to NAMI Walks is as to NAMI. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, I want to say thank you first and foremost to Adam. It is always a joy to have you with us. So did we lose him? We might have lost him. Oh, no. Justin, please communicate our thanks. We will, I will email him as well. Latanya, I'm glad you've enjoyed today. Elizabeth, thank you for joining sure. us and sharing about this exciting partnership that is sure. going on. And of course, you have been a longtime supporter of NAMI and NAMI Walks, and we are grateful for that. And as always, Dr. Neil, it is it is great for all of us when you can be here. Oh, good. And Justin just put in the link to uh, the program that he founded and the hospital where he works. So um, I will I will link to that in our Facebook uh, Facebook chat as well. But everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Next week, we move back to four o'clock. We just want to keep you on your toes. Speaking of keeping you up and moving and agile in all places. So next week, um, we will be back at four o'clock um, and we hope to see you all there. Thank you so much.